Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're ready for our next demo. Uh, first, I want to introduce the company, Glassbeam. Glassbeam is a machine data analytics company, and what they do is they basically bring structure and meaning, meaning to data from any device. Um, Glassbeam provides intelligence um, and actionable uh, data insights for the Internet of Things. Um, and their next generation cloud-based analytics platform is really designed to organize and analyze multi-structured data, delivering powerful products and customer intelligence across the entire enterprise. So with that being said, um, I'd like to introduce Glassbeam's presenter, Devong Mehta. He is the director of marketing at Glassbeam. Devong? Thank you, Alex. Thank you for the nice introduction. And, uh, and welcome, everyone, to the presentation. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Devong Mehta. I am the director of marketing at Glassbeam. And as Alex rightly mentioned, we are in the business of pr providing machine data analytics for the Internet of Things. Uh, we can, uh, I can be reached at devang at glassbeam.com if you have any questions after the presentation. And please visit our website, uh, www.glassbeam.com. There's a lot of more information about our company on the website. So what we are uh, in a snapshot, we uh, have been around for six years. Uh, we, in the Silicon Valley, California, founded in 2009, we have a team offshore in Bangalore, India. We are in the machine data analytics business. Uh, we have patent uh, pending technologies that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we're uh, funded by some of the best known angels in, in the Silicon Valley, and some of these are on our board to uh, luminaries like Kumar Malabali, the co-founder of Brocade, and other people that are on our board. Uh, we have a pretty mature product, a cloud-based platform for machine data analytics that is being used actively by customers uh, like Aruba, Dimension Data, and IBM, as well as other SMBs and uh, companies in the storage, wireless networking, and medical devices industry. And we've been recognized by a number of analysts and uh, um, media firms, uh, Gartner, CRN, and you know I won't name all of them, but we've been recognized as uh, a leader in the space for machine data analytics. So what do we do? We bring structure and meaning to data from any connected device. So we are really device agnostic. Uh, the strength of our platform is that it can ingest, parse, and analyze data that gets sent from a wide variety of devices like uh, storage servers, networking endpoints, medical devices, manufacturing um, products like CNC machines or lathes, smart energy, uh, electric charging vehicle, electric uh, vehicle charging stations, and and really any device that is smart and connected uh, to the internet that sends back data, either streaming or in log files. We make sense of that data. It gets moved to our cloud-based platform, and we provide detailed analytics that provide a lot of business value and can be used for make, making a lot of operational decisions, especially in support, product management, engineering, and even sales teams for these product manufacturers. In, in the IoT world, especially the industrial IoT world uh, that we play in, uh, data is normally uh, characterized by three vectors, volume, variety, and velocity. And our platform has been, has been really built to you know, optimize uh, the analyzing of data that gets sent in large volumes. One um, terabytes of data are being ingested by our platform today from millions of endpoint devices. It can, uh, <coughs> the data can be, uh, of different varieties, so we can uh, ingest again data that gets sent as text, XML, time series data, JSON, CSV, any kind of data. Really, the strength of our platform is that it can ingest data that gets sent in any format in a heterogeneous set of devices. All that can be absorbed inside our platform. And velocity, uh, data can be sent either as log files or streaming or in, in any format. We can uh, absorb all that data and make it available for analyses uh, through the, the different apps inside the Glassbeam platform. And we truly believe that this ability to uh, ingest data that is any in any format, structured, semi-structured, or unstructured, truly makes us one of the true uh, evolutionary products in the IoT landscape today. So we, again, in the business of converting raw data that gets sent, uh, you see a, a sampling of devices that we can connect to. Uh, networking endpoints from Aruba, which is one of our customers, medical devices, storage arrays, flash storage servers, cars, you name it. Anything that uh, emits data and is connected to the internet comes into us. 
can be converted in, in, into power, powerful insights like trending reports through rules and alerts uh, for capacity uh, observations. Uh, I'll touch upon these applications, but really to derive a lot of uh, important business intelligence and glean operational insights from uh, this data is really uh, our sweet spot. And uh, on the left, you have a sampling of devices that we get um, ingesting data from today. Uh, medical devices, sensors, uh, devices that are common in the data center like virtualization, storage, computing, networking, automobiles, and other devices from any connected machine. Again, the key point being is that we're totally device agnostic. We can ingest all kinds of data. And then once we have the data inside our platform, uh, the three key uh, value propositions is that we can be um, proactive, predictive, and prescriptive in the kinds of suggestions we give to our customers to improve their business operations. Proactive includes, uh, you know, whenever we notice patterns in data that uh, could cause anomalies, we automatically open, for example, uh, tickets in uh, the customer support uh, offering so that they get alerted immediately to something that might be uh, about to happen in, uh, in terms of a malfunction to a device in the field. Uh, moving a step further than that, we also prescribe as to what to do when something goes wrong because uh, the, the last time the problem was resolved, the data can be captured inside knowledge bases that can be shared with um, people across the support team in terms of prescriptions as to what to do when something malfunctions. And then finally, we are moving a step further uh, with our newly launched machine learning capabilities to be predictive. So we're truly in the predictive maintenance business. We can use machine learning algorithms to preempt uh, any occurrence of a malfunction in the field by, by being able to predict when something is likely to malfunction and, you know, that the support or engineering team can take some remedial steps to uh, avoid uh, the issue uh, occurring altogether uh, on the basis of our predictive analytics and predictive maintenance capabilities. <clears throat> and the result of all these capabilities, uh, there's a lot of uh, important operational efficiencies that a product manufacturer can, can engender in, in their team from support teams uh, lowering the mean time to resolution, what we call MTTR, uh, from sales and marketing teams that can get a excellent uh, uh, view of the installed base across uh, the end users to understand feature propensity, uh, which features are popular, which are not, um, and also which which kind of which customers are approaching capacity or other trending reports that can be used to uncover and unravel uh, new sales opportunities. And finally, for engineering and product management teams to increase product quality by understanding root cause analyses of problems and avoiding them in future releases. So uh, the, the value proposition of Glassbeam appeals to uh, groups across the spectrum uh, of a product manufacturing organization. A little bit into architecture, uh, we start off from the left. Uh, these are machines that are emitting machine data um, that comes into our cloud-based platform. Uh, we have a patent pending technology called SPL, which is really used to assign meaning and structure to this data. The SPL uh, then converts this data uh, into a, a meaningful uh, a meaningful format uh, by assigning meaning to the different uh, blobs of data that come in through uh, the end product. And then that is so, uh, stored in our uh, Cassandra database inside the platform. Uh, we also index this, this data for search through a uh, combination of Lucene and Solar, and then also uh, store the raw logs uh, uh, on the you know Amazon uh, storage devices, basically, so that they can be made uh, available for retrieval. Once this data is stored and organized uh, in a meaningful format, uh, a middleware uh, application info server makes us uh, available to our apps uh, for consumption by the end user. So I touch upon apps, but you know, there's a bunch of apps that can be used to search for data by keyword or parameters or um, different. Um, other uh, values, it can be uh, log vault is our uh, you know log uh, archival system. Uh, <clears throat> we have powerful rules and alerts, um, standard apps, dashboard, bunch of applications that makes you know true sense of this data for the end user. And then uh, finally, we also have a, a direct access layer, which is essentially a set of APIs, so that the data and the findings from these can be consumed inside any other application be it be a BI system or salesforce.com or any other platform, our API uh, layer makes this uh, analysis available to the end user in any format you choose.
So uh, these are the apps. Uh, there are more apps also. There are some custom apps that we can build for capacity forecasting or performance analysis. Log Vault, as I mentioned, is basically an archival system for all the logs that can get sent to us historically. So you can retrieve the logs um, at any time you want. Explorer is uh, one of the most popular uh, used application. This is a powerful search capability. Uh, this full text and parametric search across all the logs uh, that really helps you correlate uh, any event and you know adjacent sections. And then the best part of this, I think, is that uh, anytime you perform a search and uh, you find the data that you want, you can persist that search as a saved search capability, so that uh, next time you log on to the platform, you can redetect any occurrences of the same um, pattern using uh, you know, the saved search capability. So every time you come back in, you can see if any, any set of data matches the criteria that you specify. Want to touch upon all of these rules and alerts is again a, a really popular application. This is used for anomaly detection. So let's say a device is approaching a certain capacity or uh, is reaching a performance threshold beyond which it's not likely to function optimally. You can set up a rule in our uh, system for that. And every time the rule gets triggered, you get a, an alert in the form of an email or a text message. So you can perform a appropriate remedial activity to ensure that your product performs optimally in the field, both for your team and for your customers. And this has great uh, benefits in the economies of running your support organization, as well as uh, for improving customer satisfaction. So on a broad level, uh, the IoT landscape is uh, really huge, and you know the industrial IoT market also has various sub-segments, but there's largely two markets, IT market and IoT market. The IT market is, uh, is traditionally what people talk about in the evolved data center space where they talk about s simple time series events that uh, system admins need to uh, analyze uh, deeply to understand operational intelligence and to lower the mean time to resolution for any support issue. Uh, and companies like Splunk and Sumo Logic play in that space to address uh, the IT market where people are um, uh, you know, wanting to make more sense and <clears throat> get detailed insights into simple time series data. But we like to think that Glassbeam is a true IoT player, so we just don't deal with simple time series log, but we deal a lot with complex data that can be sent from a large variety of heterogeneous devices. Uh, the data, data can be in a time series fashion, it can be text files, it can be CSV, it can be SNMP, any of that, uh, the beauty of our uh, SPL language is that it can um, make sense of any kind of data in any format and assign meaning and grammar to it so that you can draw uh, uh, intelligence from uh, data that is highly complex, uh, that, which is often the case for industrialized uh, machinery. And uh, the business users for us is not just the uh, system admins, but is more along the product operational areas like support, engineering, sales, and marketing. And they can derive both operational as well as business intelligence to make uh, actionable, uh, you know, the actions are based on true, uh, the single source of truth that comes from machines in the field to reduce, uh, to address support issues, to un understand install base, to uncover selling opportunities, or to understand uh, the best way to build your product roadmap that is aligned with the needs of your customers. And as a result, you can reduce support costs, you can increase revenues, increase customer loyalty, a lot of other uh, benefits that accrue from using the Glassbeam platform to make important and informed operational decisions. And just a little bit more on that is that really, again, any device, uh, you see the wide variety of devices on the left, any kind of data, uh, while we do help in monitoring, that's not a core expertise. Our core expertise is really making sense of the data, to search, to analyze, to predict what is going to happen, and using all that uh, analyses to make better decisions that reduce support costs, increase revenues, make your customers happier, and help you build products that are truly aligned with the needs of your customers based on the intelligence that is gleaned from uh, data that gets sent from machines in the field. And lastly, uh, as a case study, uh, one of our customers uh, is a company called Aruba Networks. Uh, this is a a wireless networking company that uh, suppose, uh, su supplies uh, those wireless networking endpoints that you see in uh, universities, in dorms, in hospitals, and all that. And they had an issue with uh, every time uh, one of those uh, networking endpoints, the wireless networks went down, it took them a long time to resolve the issue because they had to drill through a lot of log files to understand why the, the endpoint failed in the first place. So 
we help them reduce the, uh, the MTTR by over 50% by the, the analysis we provided to them uh, using our uh, cloud-based platform. And uh, as an offshoot of that is that a lot of knowledge, which is often uh, we call tribal knowledge inside the support organization, is often not centralized in a place that can be used across the support the hierarchies. And we help them create a, a knowledge bases that they, they can use to uh, to to make this uh, support knowledge available to everyone, which again helps in reducing the MPTR and makes a support group uh, tremendously more uh, efficient as a result. And finally, uh, they used to get a lot of inconsistent feedback on actual product and feature usage, uh, what we call feature propensity from their customers. They, they had a hard time figuring out uh, prior to GlassBeam uh, what their customers were liking or not liking in product releases. And then uh, using our platform, now they have a, a real uh, granular view into what is being used, which feature, which tab, which uh, capability at different customer sites. They can slice and dice this data by by industry, by geography, uh, and different uh, parameters. But they have a really good view of what uh, features are popular with customers and which are not. Uh, and as a result of that, they can uh, distill all this feedback into the product roadmap so that they can build future products better aligned with customer needs. And that is really uh, all I had in terms of the graphene presentation. And I'm happy to answer any questions or answers. Great. Devon, that was a wonderful overview. If you wouldn't mind uh, unsharing your screen, we can just ask you a quick question on uh, a couple of things that came in from the audience. Um, so one of the questions uh, that came up uh, was from a gentleman named Mike. and. He's curious to know, um, you know, he, he really appreciated your overview on machine data analytics, but he wants to kind of understand how do you see the evolution of complex machine data analytics going forward, and, and, and especially from your position as a thought leader in Glassbeam? Yeah, that's a good question, and, uh, the, you know, the answer to that is that uh, you're going to see more and more products that are going to get connected to the Internet, um, products that, that are not smart anymore, that are not connected to the IoT world, are just not going to be effective anymore because they'll easily get, uh, let's say, outcompeted and outmaneuvered by products that are connected to the internet. So, uh, the short answer to that is that we're just going to see more and more data and more and more products. Uh, uh, it's going to be ubiquitous uh, the connectivity to the internet, and as a result, data is going to get more and more voluminous and more and more complex because a lot more use cases are going to arise from products getting connected to the IoT and. Uh, the need for uh, you know predictive maintenance, the need for automatic support, those use cases are going to get more complex, and the and the market is going to uh, demand these, and as a result, data is going to, going to get larger and more complex, and there's there's going to be uh, definitely need to analyze all that data to make intelligent business decisions. Great, and and just for our listeners um, out there, you know, can, when you say more complex, what, what do you mean? Uh, can you just help us understand what you mean by more complex machine data? Yeah, so, you know, machine data, uh, <clears throat> it can have a variety of different parameters. It can have simple configura configuration information, system information, you know, which version number, which operating system, all that. And then it can be more complex or what uh, technical people like to call more verbose kind of data, like log file output. When something fails, a lot of text gets gets written out as to what failed at what time, what parameters were captured, uh, what are the adjacent uh, values. You know, there's a lot that can go into a log file, especially when something, uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot something. So uh, the data can, can be in a variety of format. That's what I mean by complexity. It can be in yeah. text. It can be simple numerical values. It can be comma separated. It can be in certain protocols. It can be uh, sent as a batch, or it can be streamed. It can be made real time, or you know, uh, non real time. You know, the complexity is across different vectors and different uh, you know areas. And there's there's really there's no limit to what you know once machines are connected and instrumented to send this data back as to what kind of intelligence you can try and glean from this data. So that's what I mean by more complex. Great, great. Well, Devon, thank you very, very much for taking time today. And again, thank you to Glassbeam for sponsoring our event and our online conference, IoT Live. 
and uh, we look forward to uh, joining up with you all in the future and continuing to uh, showcase what Glassbeam's up to as you guys continue to grow. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Thank you for organizing all this. Appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.